In the next 24 hours, I'll be creating a series of the Lord of the Rings miniature dioramas. Not from the Amazon TV series, The Rings of Power, but from the original books and the Peter Jackson movie. But the plot twist is that I'll be creating it from some 17 year old miniatures from my childhood. And these miniatures, they need to be recovered. I previously caked them in paint when I was 12 years old. And at this point, they look pretty much unsalvageable. So let me explain why on earth I'm doing this. Because to me, this is much more than a miniature painting video. There's an epic story to this adventure, and I really hope you enjoy it. And this story begins back here in 2005, when Games Workshop first released the original Lord of the Rings Minds of Moria starter set, which was based in Balin's tomb from the Fellowship of the Ring. And I, as a 12 year old at the time when this game first came out, got it for my birthday. It came with all of the terrain, the pillars, Balin's tomb itself, and some dungeon doors that the troll crashed through in the movie. It also had 24 goblins, the cave troll, and the entire Fellowship of the Ring. And then I, 12 year old me, ruined it. I'm not so sure if you've ever seen those cursed pro painted miniatures on eBay. Well, my miniatures had the same energy, but I had painted them in such a way that their faces were barely visible as faces. The only reason you knew Gandalf was actually Gandalf was because I'd used the right colours. So the intention was there, but the execution definitely wasn't. I think Boromir was the best one that I'd painted. That is still a tragic thing to say, that this was the peak of my 12 year old ability. And be warned, it's downhill from here. Aragorn's face looks like a melting wax figure. Legolas no longer has eyes. 12 year old me clearly didn't even want to paint Sam, just wasn't interested. Pippin was never finished. An attempt was made on Mary, and as for Frodo, well in my story the Fellowship actually abandoned him, and therefore he is missing from my set of miniatures. But I did keep the rest of the Fellowship, and today I shall be recovering them and returning them to their former glory. But why am I doing this? Why not just buy new miniatures and start from scratch? Well, I recently got married, and I promise this will be relevant, so bear with me. I wanted to make a Lord of the Rings miniature diorama for my four groomsmen. To me, these four people have been my fellowship through life. In fact, my best friend and I used to play with these very same models when we were 12 years old. So what better way than to give him back the very same models that we played with but repainted by me 17 years later. However, to do this, we first need to recover the extensive damage that I did when I was 12 years old. So to do this, we need a bowl of methylated spirit. It's about eight pounds or $10 from the hardware store. And I'm gonna fill up this bowl and then immerse the Fellowship of the Ring into the methylated spirit. Never thought I'd say that. We're gonna leave them there for about 20 minutes. A lot of boring math later. We're now going to need to borrow our friend's toothbrush. I'm kidding, of course. But this is actually my best man's toothbrush and he left that at my house over 10 years ago. And since then, I've used it for miniature painting, for projects like this. And how strange that it is now going to be used to create this gift. So now we'll gently scrub away the original acrylic paint that I used to decimate these miniatures. And magically, 17 years of what looked like irreparable damage just comes right off. And it's oddly satisfying to watch, actually. The spirit soaks into the acrylic paint and breaks it up so I can recover Gandalf from the depths of my chaos black paint pot, much like he did after falling off the bridge of Khazad Doom. And so now we can finally recover all of the detail these miniatures once possessed once again. After removing the paint, we'll then need to bath the miniatures in warm soapy water. This is to remove any methylated spirit from the miniatures completely so that when we actually do come to paint them, it won't be an issue. On some parts of the miniatures though, the paint was actually so thick that I required a needle to pick out and remove the paint debris from the miniature. You'll also notice, rather embarrassingly, that part of the sprue is still attached to Gandalf. 
That's because when I was 12, I used to cut these miniatures out with my mother's scissors. So we'll trim down that and we'll remove the mold lines, which I also didn't bother to remove when I was 12. And now Gandalf is looking pretty dapper. Do you think we should paint him white so he is truly reborn as well, or leave him as Gandalf the Grey? As for Aragorn, 12 year old me couldn't be bothered to assemble Aragorn properly, you see, so he has a gaping hole in his arm joint. We'll need some green stuff next to fix that. Also there's a big gap where his bow and quiver is that I also want to fix because it looks kind of weird. So as you can see I've sculpted a sash that now holds his quiver and blended it into his hairline so it looks more natural. And I've also fixed his arm joint. So here are the now fully recovered models ready for painting quite the transformation from what we started with already. So now I'm going to base coat them using Chaos Black spray paint. And then for this project, I'm going to paint Aragon, who now has a face. Happy to know that I have improved in 17 years of on and off miniature painting. We also have Boromir of Gondor, and I was really happy with the golden embellishments on his sleeves in particular. And finally, we have Legolas from the Woodland Realm. But now we must begin the dioramas for the miniatures. You see, I've got these fancy display bases from Greenstaff World. They're made out of MDF with black lacquer over them and a nice velvety base. Link below if you want to grab them for yourself. We have three of these plinths, some cork and some bark from my albino snake. We'll also be using some masking tape. I'm going to mask off the edges of the base so we don't ruin it with paint later on. By scratching the surface, we can make some texture to easily stick the cork to the base using super glue or PVA glue. Using the cork and bark, we are constructing a natural looking platform that will act as the foreground for each miniature and ground them into the scenery. I want this one to look like a riverbank overhanging water. Next we'll be getting the polyfiller and pasting it all over the base in order to build up some natural looking terrain so it doesn't just look like layers of cork and wood stuck together. I'm using some dirt cheap sculpting tools to do this as well. After it's had some time to dry, I come back over it with some AK Interactive terrain dry ground. A massive part of material used for basing miniatures. The smaller grains of sand in this mix are going to give us a more natural look to the diorama than if we had not used it. It is a more costly material, but I have literally based entire Warhammer armies using just this one pot alone. In fact, if you are interested in watching other tutorials on how to base miniatures, how to paint them, from Skyrim miniatures to Warhammer 40K or Lord of the Rings, you can check out my tabletop painting channel, link down below in the description. Don't bother subscribing to this channel, this is probably the only miniature video I'll post on it. Most of my tabletop content is on that other channel. Now the groundworks are pretty much done for the plinth, I can place the miniature on it and figure out the best angle and what's going to look the most interesting. These miniatures are, are rather dynamic in their action poses, so I've gone for a slight incline on the plinth to create a feeling that they're moving in the scene. Now once it's completely dry, I will undercoat it in black using spray paint. This provides a good prime ready for additional layers of paint, but we do have a problem. These miniatures you see that I painted are stuck to their old plastic slot bases, which means I'm going to have to use a scalpel to sever their feet from the ground on which they stand. This is easier said than done without causing some real damage to the feet. It was almost as difficult as separating Boromir from the ring. Next, using an airbrush, I'm going to start on the browns of the wood and landscape, slowly working from dark to light and spraying from above to catch the harsh shadows beneath. Then we can go in with some more natural looking green grasses to create a forest floor on the diorama. Once it's dry, I'll be using a combination of lighter greens and yellows with a dry brush to pick up the textured detail of the base. This is where we're at currently. So next we need to start our river with some nice fantasy deep blue colors. I'm working from dark blue to light in order to create the impression of ripples in the riverbed. While that dries, we'll add some fake 
grass tufts and moss texture to the diorama to bring it to life. I like to go for a sporadic placement of naturalistic grasses here. Using the PVA I then paint over the riverbed to create a glossy finish, giving it the texture of water once it's dried. Next with some effect paint I come back over the wood to create some mossy looking build up. So now it looks like we're in a ancient forest that's overgrown and been reclaimed by nature. I also touch up some of the wooden highlights to maintain interest on the bark areas. Next we go in with Agrax Earthshade in order to bring the grooves of the wood back again so it doesn't just look like we've painted it. I've also printed out some background so you can start to see where we're heading here. Now we're done painting we can peel off the masking tape to reveal the clean plinths beneath. Oh so satisfying. I'm going to mount the miniatures to their bases next and then go around the edges fixing any white spots that are showing that are previously hidden by the masking tape. Now I could leave the miniatures like this, they already look pretty damn good but I think a background would really set off the diorama and give a unifying theme between the Lord of the Rings miniatures, turning them into a real fellowship. So I measure out the bases to ensure that the background is going to be big enough to allow the miniature room to breathe. We then cut out four backgrounds from cork, which I then spray paint black and mount with the printed scene on it. I then decide a less luminous green background would actually probably look a lot better. After comparing the two, we stick the background onto the base of each diorama to complete the final piece. So here they all are. Legolas, Boromir, and Aragorn as a full set from the Lord of the Rings. But this is not the best bit. The best bit was actually giving them to my groomsmen. There's no more satisfying feeling in the world than gifting something that you've made yourself and put loads of effort into. Those reactions were definitely worth it. Oh my god, this is so cool! Oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing! This is so good! Oh, wow. So your, yours is a war zone, right? Because you don't know what it is. Oh, great, thank you! Oh. <laughs> Very out of place! That's solid! Thank you! That's so That's good! good. Oh, this is wow. incredible! Now, if you're wondering what my fourth groomsman got, he doesn't actually like Lord of the Rings. I don't even know why I'm friends with him, really. So I made him a Call of Duty miniature, which I'm actually going to do another video on if this one does well. So let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see, and leave a like if you enjoyed it. Maybe I'll see you on my tabletop channel, link down below in the description.